Hi students, welcome to exercise 15, <coughs> proving identities. Okay, so to prove an identity, it means to manipulate both sides of an equation independently until they are identical. We kind of introduced that in exercise 13. We're going to reintroduce that here. Okay, so the different hints, uh, things that I can suggest to maybe help you out. Uh, you might go back to this helpful hints if you're stuck. Uh, rewrite the function in terms of sine and cos. Okay, so often if you write everything in sine and cos and then simplify, you can come up with a good answer. Um, often factoring is something you need to do. Multiplying by 1, uh, for example, sine over sine, and we'll see different examples of that. But sine over sine is one example. Um, so if you multiply by sine over sine, you're changing the expression, uh, but at the same time, you're not changing the value of the expression because you're multiplying by 1. Uh, simplifying, um, again, that's kind of tied in with factoring, cancelling out common factors, things like that. Uh, expanding, so multiplying something, so that way you can change the, the values that you have. And uh, sometimes it asks you to multiply by the conjugate. I believe I have an example in th that's like that. Okay, things to remember about an identity. Um, identities are different from equations. You're going to keep sides separate. The idea is you want to make one side, the left-hand side, equal to the right-hand side, but you're going to ma manipulate them uh, separately. Um, use the correct variables. So, for example, if I give you theta in the question, make sure to keep using theta. If I use x, keep using x. Alpha, beta, so on and so forth. Um, at the end, you want to say that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal using this statement. Uh, show all your work. So, every step that you do uh, in terms of mathematically, uh, show it because there are marks awarded for this work. Um, don't invent new math, means, meaning don't try to make something up or, or say, oh, I'll put these two things together and it should work. Um, it's better not to arrive at the right solution than to do things that are incorrect. And work vertically, so you're going to work up and down. Okay, let's take a look at some identities. Alright, so our first example, we want to prove that this side is equal to this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the left-hand side. So I'm going to start with LHS. The left-hand side is cos squared over cotan. Notice that I can change cotan into cos over sine. So this side, there's not really much I can do. Sine and cos are just sine and cos. But on this side, I can change cotan to cos over sine. So that's where we're going to start. That's why I'm starting the left-hand side. So the left-hand side would be equal to cos squared x divided by cos x divided by sine x. So the definition of cotan. Um, again, whenever you have fractions within a fraction, so this is the numerator, this is your denominator, probably better off writing it in terms of a division, if you guys remember what I mean. So you're going to have cos squared x divided by cos squared, oops, cos squared, cos x, sorry, over sine. Okay, and <clears throat> we're going to change this division into a multiplication, make it a little bit easier on us. So we have cos squared x times sine x over cos x. Well, if you look carefully, notice that if I multiply those two together, um, anytime you have a numerator by itself, this is like a division of over 1. So I can actually cancel out this cos here and one of the cos is there. So I can say this cos square is gone, this is cos is gone. What I'm left with is cos x times sine x, which notice is exactly the same thing you have on the left-hand side. So what we've proven is that we've proven the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So we've just proven that this side is equal to that one. Okay? All right, next example. All right, so in this example, we have all this stuff over here, and we have equals to 1. So obviously, this side might be easier to work with since it's got things that we can change, right? We can change cosecant into 1 over sine. We can change cosecant into 1 over sine. Um, and let's manipulate it from there. Don't forget, the idea is we want it equal to 1. So, again, we're going to start with the left-hand side, okay? Um, and I'm going to change, um, there's more than one way to do this. I, if you look carefully, um, notice that we have sine x divided by cosecant x, and we have all this stuff divided by cosecant x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate it, and, and you're going to see in identity, there's not always one right answer. I think there's more than one way to do things. Uh, this is just my strategy in this case. So I'm going to write it as sine x over cosecant x plus cos squared x times, with the brackets that they gave me, uh, cosecant x over 
cosecant x. Well, a couple things I can do here. One, since this, these are both factors of that fraction, I can cancel those out. And in this case, I can change this into 1 over sine. So what I have is sine x divided by 1 over sine x. Okay, so that's the reciprocal of a cosecant x. Plus, and all I have left over here is cos squared x. Okay, so again, I'm going to manipulate this part over here. And I'm just going to do it over here just to make it a little easier to, for our, our work. We have sine x divided by 1 over sine x, which means we have sine x times dot sine x over 1. Okay? And if you notice, when you multiply those together, because it's a multiplication now, you have sine squared x. So this is just like my little thought bubble of that part, which means now you have sine squared x plus cos squared x on the left-hand side. Well, if you remember our first Pythagorean identity, this by definition is equal to 1. So which means the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. All right, one last one. Cotan plus tan equals to cosecant times secant. Notice that I can change this into sine over cos, so this would be sine over cos and cos over sine, and this would be 1 over sine and 1 over cos. So maybe what I do is I'll change both sides. So let's start with the left-hand side, and I'm also going to work with the right-hand side as well. So this is one where I'm going to modify both. So cotan, well that's equal to cos x over sine x, and plus tan, which is sine x over cos x. So notice I'm working with each side independently. So on the right-hand side, I have 1 over sine x times 1 over cos x. Okay, well, everything's on over sine and cos. Notice that here I have two terms, fraction plus another fraction. Here it's one term because they're multiplied together. So most often what you're going to do is you're going to take the right left-hand side and you're going to get a common denominator and put those fractions together. Once I put those fractions together, you get one term, which would be equal to that one term. All right, so let's see what we need to do. So the common denominator, if you look carefully, is cosine. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by sine x over sine x. So notice I multiplied by 1. You didn't change the value. And we multiply this fraction by, hope you guys know this, you multiply by cos x over cos x to get the same denominator. Okay, so what does this result in? So here on this side, the numerators, you're going to get cos times cos, which is cos squared x. And on the denominator, you have sine cos. So divided by sine x cos x. Over here, you multiply the numerators together. You have sine squared x. And on the denominator, you have cos x times sine x. Notice that they are the same denominator now, so you can put it all together. You can say that cos squared x plus sine squared x divided by sine x cos x. The order doesn't matter, right? 2 times 3, 3 times 2, so you don't have to worry about the order here. All right, well, just like as we saw over here, sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, well, in our case, we have sine squared plus cos squared, or cos squared plus sine squared, same idea. So you have 1 over sine x cos x. All right, well, if you look back over here, that's exactly what we have here. We have 1 over sine x times 1 over cos x, which is the same thing as that. Therefore, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay, so on the next page, these examples are a little bit harder. And notice the t-chart we just gave you guys. This is a way to organize your work a little bit. We've already designated the left-hand and right-hand side. and just kind of helping you out to make sure that you'll make both sides equal to each other. Okay, in this problem, this is one of those problems where... Uh, you might have to do something a little bit different and special. Notice that there's no squares here, so you can't change sine to the cos and things like that. You can't use the Pythagorean identities. So what we're going to do, it uh, doesn't matter which side, we're going to take, let's say, the left-hand side here. So sine x over 1 minus cos. And you don't really see any way to get from there to there. So sometimes the best way to do it is do it yourself. As in, I need 1 plus cos on the numerator over here. So I'm going to multiply by 1 plus cos on the top and bottom. Notice that is the conjugate of 1 minus cos. The conjugate means change the sign. Um, and when you multiply those two, it's a difference of squares. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 
by 1 minus cos x on the numerator. Sorry, 1, uh, 1 plus cos x, right? Because that's what I want on the numerator as the final answer. And I will do that also on the denominator. Okay, well, what happens? Well, this is something that I want. I want this on the right-hand side. It's equal to that, right? So maybe I'll just write 1 plus cos over here. This is the right-hand side over sine x. All right, so now let's multiply this together. I'm not going to actually distribute the sine x into that because this is what I want at the end. So I don't want to mix it up with the things that I actually need. So in the numerator, I'm going to have sine x times 1 plus cos x. But notice on the denominator, I don't actually want 1 plus cos x in the denominator. I just want sine at the end. That is our final product. So I will multiply this and this together. And again, this is a difference of squares. So when you multiply a difference of squares, so um, the term in the middle is going to go away. So all I have to do is multiply 1 times 1. And then you have negative cos times 1 and cos times 1. So that'll give you negative cos and positive cos. So those two terms go away. And when I multiply negative cos x times positive cos x, I have minus cos x, or cos squared x. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not in a bad situation. I have 1 plus cos x on the numerator. I have this sine x I have to try to get rid of because there's no sine x over here. And here, I have 1 minus cos squared x. Well, if you remember from our trig identities, um, our Pythagorean identities, I should say, 1 minus cos squared x, well, that's simply sine x. So what I have here is sine x times 1 plus cos x divided by uh, sine squared x. Okay, and then a simple uh, factoring here. So we have sine squared, you have sine x. It's, it's a factor of the numerator, so you can get rid of the sine. You can get rid of the squared, right? Because this is multiplied together, and this is just sine times sine. What we're left with is 1 plus cos x over sine x. And we've just proven that this side is, sorry, this side is equal to this one. So look, they are equal. So therefore, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay, that one's a little bit harder. Another little bit harder one. Um, right away, you could probably tell it's a little bit harder. Look at all the stuff that we have in here. We have cos 2 theta here, so that's a little bit harder too. We have a double angle identity. So maybe what we're going to do is we're going to start with the right-hand side here. There's a lot of things I can do here, uh, specifically changing everything into sine and cos. So the right-hand side will be cot squared, which is cos squared theta divided by sine squared theta minus sine squared theta over cos squared theta. All that divided by 1 times, sorry, 1 over cos squared times 1 over sine squared theta. Okay, so again, we're, we're back to a situation where we have fractions, right, within a large fraction. And the way I told you to deal with that is multiply by the common denominator to get rid of all those fractions. Okay, so let's look at the denominators. We have sine squared, we have cos squared, cos squared, and sine squared which means the common denominator is sine squared and cos squared. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by cos squared and sine squared. So I'm moving off the page a little bit. And divided by cos squared sine squared. Okay, so again, I'm multiplying by 1 because there's the same top and bottom. So this is going to multiply this fraction and that fraction. And notice this is one term because it's multiplied together. So this will multiply this whole thing. All right, well, what do we get? Notice that when you multiply this times this fraction, this sine squared goes away. So you have cos squared times cos squared. So you're going to have cos to the power of 4. Ooh, that's scary. That doesn't make, it, make us feel like we're going in the right direction. But let's keep going. Let's see what we get. All right, so we do the same thing. We multiply this times this fraction. So notice that the cos squared is going to cancel, which we're going to left with is sine squared times sine squared, which is simply sine to the power of 4. Alright, well, so that makes us feel a little bit better because at least they're both to the power of 4. And on the denominator, this cos squared is going to cancel out that cos squared, and the sine squared is going to cancel out that sine squared. Well, we're left with 1. Okay, well, it got a little bit better. Um, well, here, in this case, 
again, a little bit harder and probably a good example to, to explain in the notes. Um, here we have cos to the power 4 minus sine to the power 4. This is actually a difference of squares. And in that case, we can write as cos squared theta minus sine squared theta and cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. And all that, well, it's divided by 1, so I don't necessarily need to write the fraction. Okay, well, um, if you think about it, this part is actually worth 1. So all I'm left with is this times 1, which is simply cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay, well, let's go back to where we had before. Let's go back to our left-hand side and say, okay, well, can this equal to this? Well, it's actually by definition equal to that. Because if you think of your uh, double angle identities, if you look back at it, this value here is actually defined by cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And look at that. We've proven the left-hand side is equal to the left-hand side. Uh, sorry, right-hand side. So left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay, a little bit harder as an example. I'm sure we might dis dis discuss this one in class. All right, so this example, notice that it says your turn. So all I'm going to do is probably give you a little bit of a hint and let you guys start. Um, if I was working with this expression, obviously we have sine 2x here. I would use a double, ag angle, double angle identity to kind of change that sine 2x into something else. And uh, obviously we have a tan x here, which obviously is sine over cos. So I'll give you guys some time to try it, and uh, we'll quickly go over this one in class.